This is a picture of me and Angelique and Angelique's dog. And this is what we looked like the entire week prior to this course when we were putting all this material together for you. So we're gonna talk about emissions categories now. Those categories such as point, non-point, et cetera. And we're gonna go through and look at pictures of various sources and talk about the different ways they could be categorized. This is the Navajo Generating Station. So we know off the bat it's not going anywhere, so it's neither one of the mobile source categories. Some people probably wish it were a one-time event, but it's not. And we know that it is large, it has multiple stacks, and it probably meets the requirements without even looking into it at all for being classified as a point source. Remember those categories? looking at the AERR federal categories for what constitutes a point source in the number of tons of emissions. And remember, we compared that to the state of New Mexico's limits for what they classify sources as being a point source. So this would probably classify as a point source under any uh, limits, including the AERRs. So I would classify this as a, definitely a point source. This is a busy gas station. And gas stations are fairly flexible in terms of being classified as a point source or a non-point source. It pretty much depends upon how many gas stations you have and if you can collect gas station specific information for each of them. If you have just a few gas stations and you can collect that information, then you could classify each gas station as a point source. If you have multiple gas stations, maybe eight gas stations, and you can collect some information from some of them, it's often easier to classify gas stations as non-point sources. And then, of course, we have these cars and trucks here, which are classified as on-road mobile sources. This is a picture of smoke coming out of a residential chimney. And this is typical of rural locations that heat by wood stoves. So again, if you looked at the individual emissions from each of these houses or buildings, then you could classify them as a point source, but it would be pretty small. However, what people usually do is lump them together, and so you would have a certain number of houses heating by, or buildings heating by wood, and that would be a non-point source. But not everybody uses wood, right? You've got propane, you've got natural gas. So each one of those would be a non-point source. It could be, depending upon the easiest way for you to put the information together. So you might have a non-point source of all those buildings that heat by protein, propane, a non-point source for all those buildings that heat by natural gas, a non-point source category for all the buildings that heat by wood. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. As a gravel pit, you can see it's fairly spread out, and you might want to classify this as a non-point source because of its spread outedness. And in that case, the bulldozer, or probably multiple bulldozers and different pieces of equipment, would be considered their own non-road mobile source. Or you could, if this was a smaller or single gravel pit operation, you could classify this as its own point source. And in that case, the bulldozer and any other similar pieces of equipment would be processes within the larger non-point source. So again, this is a situation in which there's flexibility, as with gas stations, of classifying a source as a point source or a non-point source. This car is obviously on the road and it is a on-road mobile source. This unpaved road is definitely a non-point source. Unpaved roads are a big source of particulate matter in a lot of locations. Snowmobiles, they are definitely non-road mobile sources and a, as everybody knows, a pretty big source of pollution, lots of stinky stuff. Burning agricultural fields is definitely a non-point source and emits more than you would think in addition to the PM, that's pretty obvious. These are examples of oil and gas drilling and transport operations. In general, each one of these 
types of sources emits small amounts of pollution, although as we know, they can produce a lot of stink. But in terms of putting them all together, especially along a pipeline, that would probably be an area source. Moving right along to what you are going to work on this week, we hope, is writing the first three sections of your emissions inventory report. So review the mock emissions inventory titled My Reservation EI that is in the Module 1 folder, and you probably downloaded it already, and take a look at the first three sections, the introduction, the reservation location, and the emissions area. And you can see they're not extensive. This is just the introduction. It just basically says this is what we're going to inventory in terms of our pollutants that we're going to include. And then just a few sentences on background. Then the location section where you want to say what county you're in, a general description of the area, a description of the population, how the land is used, any nearby cities and towns, especially larger cities. And you can see that Angelique wrote a several sentence paragraph on the reservation location accurately describing the emissions inventory area that she included, including some information about the nearby cities and towns. So again, really can be very short. The emissions area usually includes a buffer area or buffer zone around the exterior boundaries of the reservation. And you want to take a close look at whatever sources you already know of that exist outside the reservation, especially those that are downwind. And at some future time, we are going to demonstrate how to use TICE to make a map, which can show the exterior boundaries of your reservation as well as the buffer area around where you've included the sources in this report. Again, the emissions area section does not have to be very large. Two paragraphs are all that Angelique included in her example report. So we suggest, right after this webinar is over, write these three sections. Open up that My Reservation EI document, just use it as an example, and get it over with. Email us that document, and you will be making progress on your emissions inventory report and keeping the momentum going. Next time, we're going to talk about TICE, and that's going to be really, really fun.